thank you everybody for coming. Uh, in case it's not obvious, I am not Laura. Laura okay. is uh, this lady here. So um, I have uh, I am not in the anti-harassment team. Um, uh, Laura prepared the presentation and then uh, she found out that she couldn't attend. So she has recorded um, a video for you to watch. And then uh, she listed something that she would like people discussing. And the video is only 12 minutes, so let's just start. Tell me if uh, you cannot listen it. Yeah, yeah, we have to output the audio too. Um, Team. And one of the teams that I am contributing to is the anti-harassment team since about one year ago, since uh, 2015. Okay, let's go. Hello, my name is Laura Arjona. I am a non applauding Debian developer since uh, 2015. And one of the teams that I am contributing to is the anti harassment team since about one year ago. I couldn't come to DevConf, uh, but I was very interested in this buff to happen. So I'm very thankful to Anna and to all the people that made it possible and to all of you that are attending and I hope participating. I'm leaving in the Gobi document a link to this uh, test script. Uh, for the case, it's shown too small uh, in the screen and a link to the slides uh, too. Uh, in this presentation, I will explain a bit what is the anti-harassment team, or at least my understanding of it. Uh, I'll try to summarize uh, the last year working in the team and some challenges that we face inside the team and in Debian in general in order to improve the current status of things. So what is the Debian anti-harassment team? You can visit our wiki page to learn about it. Uh, I will open now here. Uh, we are a point of contact for not only people seeing or being victims of abuse, but, uh, but also for any community member concerned of creating a more welcoming and respectful environment in Debian. The main documents that we use for reference uh, and we recommend everybody to know about them are the Debian Diversity Statement approved in 2012, uh, the Debian Code of Conduct approved in 2014, and the DebConf Code of Conduct introduced in 2014, if I am not mistaken. In May 2016, uh, some people noticed that the anti-harassment team could be unresponsive because uh, some of the members were retired of Debian or in hiatus for reasons. And there was a call about this, and the team was relaunched with some new people, me among them. So you can see the current composition of the team in the web page in our website uh, about organization in Debian. And it's also written in our wiki page uh, here. Uh, and this is the current composition of the team. Patti Langasek, Margarita Manterola, Laura Arjona Reina, which is me, and uh, Neil McGovern. Uh, what do we do or how do we act? Uh, usually, 
we received, uh, we received a report of a bad behavior of somebody or a violation of the code of conduct. We acknowledge the receipt. We offer listening and a friendly word from the community by mail or IRC to the victim or to the reporter. We gather information about the issue and if there is possible mediation, we talk to the offender and offer it. Uh, or we contact the offender and explain the behavior that is wrong. How can they improve the situation, our proposal, and offer help or support in making things better. We try to understand and respect everybody's feelings. We focus on the bad behavior and the type of the community Debian wants to be. And then we iterate and finally close or escalate. We try to keep the reporter informed about the process. And about our tools, uh, apart from the reference documents that uh, I already mentioned, we don't have much other resources to help ourselves handle the different issues that come to our inboxes. We have reviewed the wiki page, which included some links to further info and resources, and we have added uh, some more uh, at the top of the further in info uh, section here. These are the new uh, links. Uh, if you know any other documents that can help the team members or any Debian contributor to promote a more welcoming environment or to deal with conflicts or misbehavior, please send it to the mail alias and we'll consider adding it to the wiki page. But note that if we end up with a long list of links, the wiki page may become less useful. So help in curating that section, selecting the most adequate and updated links is also welcome. Finally, the own activity of the team uh, helps ourselves to learn from experience for the good and for the bad. And when a new issue arises, in some cases, we can reuse some parts of former communications in order to act quicker. And in every case, we can also try better than the last time. Note that for the good or for the bad, we, or at least me, uh, don't keep history of the activity of the team before May 2016. So now I'll try to produce a kind of activity report of our last year. I have counted about 40 threats or conversations since July 2016 until today. Uh, a short summary of the topics. We have dealt, we have dealt with seven issues. Three of them are still ongoing. Four issues about behavior in the backtracking system. One issue about content in Planet Debian. And two serious issues about behavior of Debian contributors towards people. Only these seven proper issues mean about one issue each two months average. This is, in my experience, a pace of almost non-stop because some issues take months to get them handled and closed. And we have more requests in between as I explain now. We had three more messages informing about potential issues that didn't go further, fortunately. We had six, six messages with removal requests from the mailing list archives. One of them was spamming as an act of harassment, and that was the only one that could be tackled by us, 
and the messages removed as spam after some time. The others were answered or redirected to list masters, but no actual action was taken. We had two trolling messages, ignored but demotivating. We had four requests from Debian project leader, Debian account managers or DevConf committee about issues or people, two ongoing because of the ongoing issues. Some more non spam mail, some of them was answered, some other got buried in the, our inboxes. For example, a request of interview about enforcing a code of conduct. How does it work in practice? We didn't answer. And finally, some more internal communication about five tasks that uh, are still pending. Uh, updating the wiki page, which is partially done, as I explained before. Creating a GPGK, it was proposed, but undone yet. Uh, about a report to the DPL or to the project. Uh, we started on January, couldn't be delivered due to the lack of team feedback. It's been partially done today. Uh, a task about renewing the DEPCONF code of conduct. It was proposed by several Debian contributors. I sent a second proposal after working on it. There was consensus in there is more work needed together with the DEPCONF team. And here we are. Uh, and finally, communication about enlarging the team or renewing some members that are not active. So everything gets done and we have some rotation for our own mental health. And that's all from the report or for my part. Now I propose some topics uh, for discussion. Here throw some ideas, but it's not mandatory to discuss about them if there are other topics uh, of more interest of the audience. One uh, idea for discuss is the name of the team. Uh, Anti-harassment puts some people in a defensive mode. I'd like a name in the positive side, making feel people making people feel that we care about the health of the community, about respect, about inclusiveness. We can do some brainstorming in the Gobi. I'll add my bad proposals there too. Another topic for discussion can be how to strengthen the team, enlarge it, new members, rotation, also because issues are hard, and disgusting most of the time. Uh, are there any volunteers who decides who is in the team? Last time was the DPL. Some people volunteered and the DPL accepted them. Uh, probably after today, the team is more known and the number of reported cases will rise. We are a big community and even 2% of people suffering harassment is a lot of people and a lot of issues for a small team. Can we maybe tackle this at team level? Uh, some kind of moderator roles in each team or I don't know. Another topic for discussion is that we are slow. We try to breathe deeply measure our words, be kind, coordinate an answer inside of the team. We have few experience. Some of us are not English native speakers, so everything takes time. Uh, some iterations take a week or more. If there is a peak of other work or life stuff, delays increase and people suffer. It's sad. Another possible topic for discussion is delegation or not delegation. 
currently we are a consultative body. Some people understand anti-harassment as moderators and de-escalators. Some others feel that anti-harassment will need more powers to enforce themselves, the code of conduct, and decide in serious issues. Currently, we gather information, try to mediate, if possible, and produce a report or proposal, as I explained before. Not else, nothing else. How to report our activity to the project, the format of the reports. I don't know if what I said makes sense for you, resonates, or it's kind of vague. vague. Uh, the level of detail, where to report. Uh, Debian project mailing list is public, for example, so. Uh, when, once a year, when something happens, uh, after closing any issue, I don't know. And that's all, I think, from my part. Thanks for attending, and I hope you can discuss, and I will try to follow closely the stream, the GOBI, and the IRC. Mm. Now it's your turn. Thank you very much, and hugs and kisses for everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>
was just going to counter that. I mean, I, I possibly do agree with you, but the counter to that is to say that there's no point having a team which does a lot of work, comes up with a solution, and then finds out after the fact, potentially, that another team in Debian doesn't want to enforce what was the decided solution. So that's the risk there. Um, if there, if there's some point, there's a there's a need of power. Let's talk about it. As far as DAM is concerned, there is space for discussion. I won't go into detail now because I'm burnt out at the moment. But um, I recall there's been conversation, but I don't remember the details. The, the only thing I remember is that there is space for working something out. Uh, what about powers uh, to the team? Does somebody have an opinion? What actually should be the actual powers of the team? It's more a question to Marga. Well, what are the powers that you would need to, to, to promote the diversity we want and protect the victims? Because I kind of failed to answer that question myself, maybe because I'm not in the position, but yeah, what are the powers you would need? Uh, when it comes to people who feel as though they're being harassed um, and feels that they're victims in these situations, it's very important for them to know that there is immediate recourse uh, and that after that there can be like further discussion periods because when you allow somebody who is positioned as a harasser to maintain a presence and like active contribution to a project, what you're saying is that that person's uh, like potential value is more important than creating a safe space or comfort for the people present and involved in like the community at large. Um, uh, the other thing that's big with that is it's really easy for people to uh, report incidences. Uh, I've heard the term, like the phrase use incident reporting a lot rather than like harassment reporting because it like kind of softens the conversation. Um, but when you're having uh, like this theoretical, maybe something will happen in the future, uh, you know, it doesn't all the time. Um, and I bet a lot of us can think of a case where we've seen something in the news, like perhaps with a, like a cop shooting someone where they say there's an investigation and that's the end of the story. Um, so, right, when we are discussing the powers, I think there's also a question of what our scope is, which is very unclear, right? So, we are the anti-harassment team, so we are supposed to receive complaints regarding harassment. It's not that those are none, but they are very few. We have many more complaints about violations of the code of conduct that don't, uh, don't fall under the typical definition of harassment, right? That we have a code of conduct and sometimes people make mistakes and they violate the code of conduct. Um, and so we get this thing. So for example, someone was uh, mean to someone else on a bug. Is that really our scope or is it not? It's not clear. We get the reports, we try to mediate, we, try, we do our best into like, creating an inclusive community but it isn't really clear whether this is our scope or not. So we are always in a constant struggle of, are we really supposed to be the people doing this work or not? Because it's not that someone is being sexually harassed where you can really say, okay, this is the anti-harassment team responsibility. It's someone making awful comments on a bug. Uh, if I'm talking too much, just anybody tell me to stop. Um, so uh, a pretty common take on groups that are doing well, like anti-harassment work or like definitions of harassment in communities is usually around not just like, you know, the example of sexual harassment, but harassment in general. Um, and like that's being taken in a broader and broader definition these days. Uh, so racist comments in addition to sexist comments, in addition to like things like being mean or making someone feel uncomfortable because of a discriminatory practice, which usually looks like picking at someone based on skill level or demographic like identity. Um, so when that happens, and like with incident reporting teams, kind of the assumption is the first thing they're gonna do is just talk to the person. 
uh, and say, hey, like, this is this thing that happened. This is how you made someone feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, and there's a lot of nuance. Like, you're never supposed to say who the person was who said they were feeling uncomfortable. Like, there's negotiation in that. the question of power is, I mean, I guess, what, as a practical example, do you think that, do you think that this team should be able to decide, for example, that if you got given some examples of someone whose behavior on the list seems to be completely inappropriate, do you think this team should have the power to say that person is banned, or should it be merely that you say, we're going to send this as a dossier to the list masters? I mean, what's your opinion is of the purpose? I'm not sure why we are focusing so much on my opinion because well, the, point of, but but I mean, the point of the, the book was are... to listen to your opinion as a community rather than our opinion as a team to get, be able to get input from the community. So I'd rather listen to the answer from other people and not from me. It... Yeah, well, the, the, the importance, I think, uh, of hearing your opinion is that having dealt with these cases, for example, uh, Laura presented that uh, in one case you were able to remove a message and in other cases you were not because list masters didn't agree. And I think that uh, as a data point is important. You, yeah, the scope of this team is not defined because it implies everything. Because it, it could imply, I don't know, if somebody today wanted to, to upload a, a hot baby back into the archive, well, anti-harassment would, would probably step in anti-harassment or whatever this is uh, re renamed to. So yeah, the scope is way too broad, but because the problem uh, is, uh, is transversal to all of the interaction areas we have, even the, 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 as technical as they can be or as social as they can be. Okay. I want to make a comment before you continue. Uh, anti-harassment team, they are only for people. They cannot check everything. So <laughs> when you say that uh, something like hot bed will happen, they will step in. Uh, always think <laughs> that even if you're expecting them to read emails, in communicating them things. Please, of course, always. Hot Babe would draw somebody in the bad way who would feel attacked and would uh, file a, a complaint yeah. on that. <laughs> uh, the example was good. This user never, never yeah. please expect the anti harassment is of going course. to be reading everything and they are going to act. Please always contact them and ask them to, to take action. So one, I think one uh, interesting idea is that the list master's uh, delegation could, could be reduced to like them being only the technical thing and de delegating every anti-harassment question to the anti-harassment team if it was sufficiently staffed, etc. blah, blah, blah. But, but saying any um, exclusion from a list should go through anti-harassment and whatever decision would be binding and the list master are just the technical executants and don't take these decisions ever. The problem now is that anti-harassment does part of the job and then says list master, look, you should really do that but you can, you're entitled to your own opinion without having all the dossier. Um, uh, in terms of executive power, I think it, it correlates with responsibility. So in Debian, we have the list masters responsible for mailing list, the web masters responsible for web pages, the FTP master responsible for packages, uh, the Debian account manager, manager responsible for membership. So uh, if anti harassment decides that somebody shouldn't be a Debian member, it's actually the Debian account manager responsibility to make that call. Uh, glad to listen, but if I remove a person because anti harassment told me so, but I feel like I shouldn't, then I am the person responsible for membership. So uh, probably it's my call uh, and not anti harassment. Um, but uh, this then brings up the question of what is the responsibility of anti harassment? If the responsibility is making it so that Debian is a safe space, that is a huge responsibility. Um, and it should come with huge powers. Uh, <laughs> uh, reverse Spider-Man problem. Um, so uh, if the responsibility is a mediation role or making sure that no complaints will be unheard, 
uh, the, the, there was a good point of uh, safety is a shared responsibility. It's not just anti-harassment that keeps Debian safe. It's the whole of Debian and anti-harassment is to make sure that no complaint will be unheard if it hasn't been taken care locally, in which case the responsibility is shared and uh, they could be the final collectors of things that would have fallen through the cracks to be forwarded to the others. If the list masters are not acting on anti-harassment uh, because they don't have time, that is a red flag. Uh, so that, it, it, I see it on, on a broader discussion of what are scopes and responsibilities and how to make them reasonable and actionable, both in terms of expectations and in terms of powers. Okay, Tincha and then Jimmy. Um, so I think that there is one problem of, of having um, the, the, this, this decentralized uh, decision making um, because, well, then it could be very difficult to enforce any kind of action and you might have to justify uh, to every team, like first to justify to anti-harassment or whoever team then, then makes a recommendation, then you have to justify it again to another team. Uh, I think that can be problematic for the people affected, the victims. Um, and well, we're having discussions, and I think I agree with the idea that, uh, that I think anti-harassment and them that like they should have somehow work together, or maybe have anti-harassment have some more protection or, or support role, but. I definitely think that some team needs a delegation with tools to enforce uh, sanctions when they are needed and to act in the protection of our members. Um, I think as a project we have failed for too long to protect our members properly and I think we need to do something about that. So I wanted to say one thing about, uh, as my own opinion, I also wanted to uh, mention that further up on the Gabi document, uh, Laura gave her opinion, and those of us who were focusing on the in-person conversation may not have noticed. Uh, I didn't at first. Uh, she, she, I think, liked the idea of balance, balancing the powers across the different teams and, and said that there's always a dam in the DPL if necessary, but... Uh, uh, if you want to read what she said, I'm not going to speak for her when I can't read it on the screen right now. My, 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 uh, my point was going to be that um, the, the impact of a communication from a team with a set of enforcement powers versus a team without a set of enforcement powers feels different to the person on the other side of the conversation. And I am not actually advocating one answer or the other answer, I'm just and at least not with this point, I'm just saying that, so similarly, if you're talking to a manager or an HR department at a job, human resources, um, it's a very different conversation than if you're talking to a peer or a support group in a safe space. So we should consider what type of reaction we're looking to get and uh, what type of powers would make that better or harder as one of the factors we consider. Yep, I, I think, uh, 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 I mean, I put this idea on the Gobi, but uh, uh, I'd like to hear your, your reactions to this. Uh, maybe a, a way to get out of this, uh, well, uh, uh, where's the limit of the power of whom uh, issue, it could be uh, to change the composition or, or change, uh, how, uh, yeah, uh, to make uh, the anti-harassment team be of one person out of uh, each key team. I mean, if one of them and one of list masters and one of uh, DevConf committee, they become the anti-harassment team, maybe aided by, by others, I don't know. Just uh, uh, think this, can, this could solve the, the, the issue of uh, what power do, do you have to, to take this decision that belongs to another sphere. Okay, thank you everybody for your opinion. Um, let's talk a bit about the second, uh, the second point in the path, how to report activity to the project, because uh, anti-harassment have been doing, they have been doing their job uh, silently for, for a couple of years at least now. 
So far, and Laura has done now the, the field reporting that has been done so far. Uh, when things are not reported, people think that either they are working a lot or they are doing nothing. So which level of, uh, at which level of, of reporting do you, think, um, do you think they should go? Reporting a lot, reporting periodically, reporting as it goes. I think, in my opinion, um, not much reporting will be needed because there's not much you can share. Um, but probably making sure that everybody knows that anti-harassment is there and that can be reached, uh, I think will be very useful. I probably agree with you, but um, I guess I would say having some reporting is useful just to show it exists, but that could be like once a year to say, we've dealt with some incidents and just post a summary as, as the kind of summary that was given here. I don't think monthly or weekly reports would be help at all. If uh, nobody else has that. If it's to make visible that anti-harassment team exists, then bits from the anti-harassment team. <laughs> Uh, with some report and some suggestions on things. Did you know, if you are uncomfortable in Debian, you are not alone? I mean, I, 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 it sounds like a joke, but it's actually... Okay, we have like 10 minutes left, so we are going to the point everybody wants to go, that is the name of the team. <laughs> so, how do you think the team should be named? Please uh, give your silly ideas. Incho? Well, I think first you will need to define the scope to be able to find a name. So I don't know if it's worth having this discussion. So I agree with that. And this is just um, the Tor project is going through this a little bit. And they have a team called the Community Council. And I think their scope is much wider. Um, they do deal with harassment, but other issues. And it's a team that is composed of five people and the project votes on who's on the team. But I think that's a good name for a wide scope, but I agree that the name is kind of connected to the scope question. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, let's go back to the point three. Okay, there is. Yeah. One, one thought is that in the earlier, uh, so the, uh, the goals discussed in the earlier diversity uh, roundtable uh, line up a little bit with uh, one of the points Laura made for this team, uh, namely fostering a welcome and inclusive uh, culture within Debian, uh, separate from handling specific incidents. And if that is the if the scope does cover both points, as opposed to just handling harassment, uh, then maybe a broader name like diversity and inclusion could be appropriate. But that seems, I don't think any, I, I don't think, I don't think anybody was envisioning the two things as the same team. So that's a different question. Uh, so Laura mentioned this uh, during her presentation uh, about, the, about the team. She was suggesting that um, the current pace of the team is a lot of work to handle for, for the people who are currently active. Um, and question that she put is how strident the team. So far, uh, last year when the team uh, was, uh, let's say that nobody was active, a call for help was done and, and Laura stepped in. But she, she has been wondering um, how to, how to get more volunteers and how to make sure that the volunteers are people who should be able to, to handle with this, because not everybody knows how to handle with this. And I personally going to ask uh, another question. Do you think that the anti-harassment team, whatever name they will have, should have somebody who is totally external to the community, but trying to handle this kind of thing for helping them? Can you clarify what you mean by that? Because if they're working on this, they kind of become part of the community. So um, do you mean someone who intentionally, so to try and choose someone who doesn't know about Debian, or what do you mean? 
there is this idea that has been floating around, not related to, to this scheme, that uh, there are plenty of things that Debian contributors don't like doing, for example, accounting. So this idea of paying for, you know, keeping, keeping the account, keeping the money of the, of the project. I think not no a lot of people want to do anti-harassment or related things, because uh, no, not only anti-harassment, there are related things who are also doing this kind of job. It's not a fun one. So I was wondering if we should uh, get paid and get somebody who is paid to do this for helping, specializing in, in handling these kind of issues. No opinion, okay. <laughs> I think it might be hard to get, it's harder to get people to respect the decisions if it's someone who's from outside the project, I would have guessed, but it's hard to say for me, I don't know. Okay, so does somebody wants to do a proposition about um, and then, uh, what was that? So Sorry. If, 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 if people from outside is of, is of interest, um, I, I do have one idea that might be helpful to the team. Would the team have an interest in someone who has dealt with, uh, with harassment issues in some sort of specific area, come and do like a guest chat or something with the team to talk about their, you know, their expertise to help the team learn from that? Is that something that you would want? For me, I was launching an idea. Mm -hmm. um, if there, you think you have something that could help, you should contact uh, them. I okay. cannot really talk by them. I, okay, I was yeah. just proposing. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll talk contact with you. My wife uh, works at a domestic violence shelter, so she's dealt specifically with harassment issues around that, and I'm sure someone in her agency would be willing to do a one-time discussion just to give expertise and share it with the team. Uh, um, like, I, I was about to say something similar. In money invested could be paying for training if like mediation, facilitation, uh, that could be good for anti-harassment and not just for anti-harassment as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So anybody here feels like proposing a name and, and the powers that the team should have? Like, given that we already decide that everything should be in, in a lot, uh, maybe we can close the, the both with some proposition. It's a difficult question, I know. Yeah, there's a few names. Community empowerment, anti-harassment. Yeah, the thing is, uh, the anti-harassment part maybe is uh, not nice. In the <laughs> okay, so we are going to leave it here. If uh, it happened that somebody this evening get an hour song idea about a name for the team, just send them an email. And thank you everybody for coming. <laughs>